Turn your Bibles, please, to Luke chapter 13. And we're just going to have a look at uh, uh, one little thing today. Um, last week I mentioned, uh, I think it was last week, uh, in a, one of the messages. Recently, anyways, we talked about words are important. We're going to look at one little word today and just see how the Lord Jesus, Jesus used it and uh, just what we can get out of that. So we turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 13. And uh, first of all, we'll have a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we just thank you now, Lord. We thank you for this time. We just ask that you guide. Help me with this message, Lord. Help every one of us, anyone that hears this, Lord, to understand and to take these things to heart. So, Lord, we just thank you. Thank you for your word. We thank you that every word is important. And we just thank you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. All right, we're going to read a bit of scripture here, first of all. Uh, back to verse 11, Luke chapter 13, verse 11. <clears throat> Excuse me. It says, And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day, and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work. In them therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, dost not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall, and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, uh, whom Satan has bound, lo, these eighteen years, uh, be loosed uh, from this bond on the Sabbath day? And when he had said these things, all his adverse adversaries were ashamed, and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. Now, I want to just uh, consider something here. Uh, the other day, we're going to look at this woman who was born over. The other day, uh, my wife and I were in the, the city next to us over there. And come up to a stop, come up to a stop, uh, stoplight, where like the second car back, and we noticed a fellow crossing the road, and he was bent over a 90 degree angle. I'm serious, like bent, like right, like I can't even bend down that far, and his head up, so you can see where he's going. And I thought of this passage of scripture. In fact, I've been looking at this just earlier. And uh, just, your heart goes out to him. I've never seen that before. Have you ever seen that? Just amazing, amazing. And uh, uh, my, the thought in my head was, wouldn't it be wonderful to be able to go over and, uh, and see him get healed right there or something, you know? Then I was thinking about that later. And the Lord says, that's not, his, that's not his immediate and his most needed. Uh, that's what he does. He doesn't need that the most. What he needs mostly is to be saved. Mm -hmm. And did you ever uh, afterwards think, I, I dropped the ball. I should have parked the car and got out and run after him and shared the gospel with him. I'm not going to straighten him up, but I should have shared the gospel. I'm going to look at this portion of scripture and just see that. I just thought that was amazing because I was looking at this and had, had written down this little, little wee, this is a mini study, one of those little mini studies that I, I like to do on just one word or something. Because words are important. It's Matthew chapter 4, verse 4 says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Okay, and you have them right here in our language today. Um, we see that this uh, um, is very important. Words is how we communicate with other people. Our words must be clear. Our words must be uh, understood. Okay? And uh, we commune with God. We use words. And how does God commune with us? He uses words. Words of Scripture, doesn't he? Um, but the bent over man, it really, really, uh, really struck me. It just was, uh, well, we'll get to the end of it and maybe mention it again. Um, consider this example here in Luke chapter 13. Verse 16, and the Lord says, uh, uh, to This woman, not, not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, who Satan has bound, lo, these 18 years. The account of the woman, she'd been uh, in that state for 18 years. 
been bowed over, bent over. And then I think until you see it, you can't really appreciate really what it was like. It was, it was an awful thing to look at, an awful, horrible thing. Now the ruler of the synagogue was there, and he gets upset with the Lord Jesus. You should be doing this on the Sabbath. And so the Lord uses an example of the ox and the donkey in the stall. He says, you hypocrite. As he uses the word hypocrite off times to, to those that oppose the leaders and such. Don't you go and loose, set your the ox in and the ass to loose to lead them to water. See, so he used that word, you loose them. Ought not this woman who's a daughter of Abraham be loosed from this thing that and he said Satan has bound her for 18 years. Okay? Bound her for 18 years. Uh, so what, this woman should be unbound. But look at what he says here in verse 16. And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these 18 years. Well, look at that little word lo right there. L-O. That's put in there. The Lord Jesus said, um, whom Satan hath bound these 18 years. But he didn't say that. He said, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these 18 years. Let's have a look at that particular thing right there. Just this little wee word study is all we're doing here. What words are in, uh, important. He was saying to her, this woman should be unbound. She's a daughter of Abraham. The devil has bound her for this period of time, but he says lo. Now that word lo, um, it means to uh, behold. It means to think of it. Think about it. It's kind of, just stop and think about this. So he's basically saying to them, I want you to stop and you think about she's bound for 18 years. Bound for, I don't know how long that fellow we saw, but he was in that condition. It might have been all his life. He wasn't very young looking. But maybe that condition makes them look old, you know, the stress that they know. But the Lord Jesus said to them, I want you to stop. I want you to think. I want you to consider 18 years. And perhaps that's all the Lord wanted us. Well, he wanted that man to be witness to. Maybe we'll come across him again. But to stop and look, and you can't help but have compassion on the individual when you just stop what you're doing in the busyness of your day, in the busyness of this individual here that was telling the Lord Jesus off and, and he had gone against their rules and all this things, just stop for a minute. Just stop and think about this one that is bound. For 18 years, the devil has bound her. So what is it you and I should stop and think about? Lo. Just stop for a minute. And oft times the busyness of our day causes us, or rather interferes with, maybe some of the things that we should be doing and thinking about. What should we think about? How about the multitudes of people that we meet every day, or we see, or we know of, that are bound by Satan, and hell is their portion? Just think about it, that's all. Lo. Stop and just think about it. Think about the people you work with. Think of your neighbors. Think of the people you see walking down the street. Look at these people. They are bound by Satan and they are bound to go to hell with him. Mm -hmm. Lo, just think about it. That's all. Every word's important, isn't it? Just think about it. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you now, Lord. We thank you for this little word here for us to stop and, and to look and to see uh, what you were getting across to them at that time. And then even for us as we read the, the Bible, Lord, we know that every word is important that you gave. A man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of, the, out of your mouth. We pray, Lord, that sometime we would come across that bent over man again and be able to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with him. I did not think about it, Lord. Forgive me. Help us, Lord, to not walk past the individuals that need Jesus. Show us. Help us. Help us to have compassion. Help us to consider this little word, low. 
think about it. What can we do? And we just thank you now, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, folks. Take care. Bye now.